specific number of candles okay so what i have done is like see we we basically are price action traders like for us the price that has happened uh, it previously right right taking that as a reference we work on our future prices like okay so based on that calculation right this is we calculated okay and previously we have only one trend line why it is true and why it's there's a confusion in there so as i said like right the trend line is basically a price action where in which like based on the price moves the average price moves on the last few candles we calculate a particular trend line okay so this trend line what you see is uh trend line number 1 okay and then this is trend line number 2 okay so how they are different one thing is by the shades of the colors that has been put out right if you see this trend line right this is the earlier trend line okay i'll say trend line 1 as ltf trend line that is lower time frame trend line okay and then the other trend line i call it as htf trend line that is higher time frame trend line okay that's how we will discuss htf and uh, ltf trend line okay so this ltf trend line as I, the name suggests is a lower time frame trend line okay and if you see the color of that right it is green and red color okay so any time if it is price is trading above that right it marks it as a green and any time it is trading below that right it marks it as red you can see this below this it was trading uh, red okay uh, so uh, it's just marked as uh, the, uh, the trend line is red color and if the price is trading above this right we can see it is uh, continuously marked as green okay that's the idea behind it okay and the higher time frame trend line right if you see it is marked in blue color and orange color okay the if the price is trading below the trend line it is marked as orange color and if it is trading above that right it is marked for blue color okay so i'm just giving a color uh, representation what i <coughs> introduced with this okay the indicator automatically takes care of that like okay in sense uh, the, uh, as i said like two features that we have introduced newly one was like this trend line the other one is optimized our buy and sell triggers okay these buy and sell triggers are now uh, works in uh, previously the trend line was separate and the, the buy and sell triggers are also separate but uh, with the new build what i was also tried is uh, uh, the trend line and the buy and sell triggers should also talk to each other and then they work in parallel with each other okay uh, at least for conservative trades right it takes into account the trend line uh, triggers uh, and some the trend uh, which has been shown in the trend line as well as our buy sell triggers okay so uh, that's the reason that, that we will take it so this is clear so these are the two trend prime trend lines and uh, and the color coding of each of those trend lines okay so the logic is simple if the price is this is say for example this is my trend line if the price is above this we will consider for a possible buy trigger and if the this is our trend line and if the price is trading below this okay then we will look for a possible selling opportunity is that that simple okay why two multiple trend time trend lines okay see ltf is lower time frame trend line so for example if i am trading in a 5 minutes time frame right <clears throat> i want to know like on a little bit higher time frame say for example twice the time of the current trend time uh, time line i am trading say for example if my current trading time line is 5 minutes at least two, twice of it it is at least 15 minutes or half an hour okay that is what the higher time frame is like because you know like if uh, something has to turn right uh, there has to be a if a higher uh, time frame support is also there right then it's easier for it to make it turn okay it's not just in a lower time frame one shot it will get a turn you it will has to move slowly and then the higher time frame support will be there and then it goes out okay so if there is a higher time frame support also confirming your thing right then your chances of going towards that direction is higher okay so what i mean to say is if 5 minutes time frame also supports a reversal and you also get a reversal on a little bit higher time frame like 15 minutes or something like that then we can consider this as a possible trend reversal okay so that is what we use higher time frame so for example now in intraday when you see 5 minutes charts right this lower time frame will be your 5 minutes and this higher time frame will be kind of a 15 minutes so in both 15 minutes and 5 minutes there is a trend reversal happening right that is a very good solid trigger to go long okay so uh, maybe here right you can see both it has been taken out here both 
Here, the first time the five minutes is taken on the lower side, that is the first sign of reversal. This is the next sign of reversal. Okay, and you can see this market came down, and then there might be some other support out here uh, to get the thing. So, and before we start with this, right, I also want to mention that see, these buy sell triggers, whatever we are put right, is not just we take a blind buy or sell at these points. But these, as I always say, like our pivots are the main thing. If there is a at a support zone, we are anticipating a possible reversal. That is the time we look for a possible buying opportunity. And whenever there is a buy with a cross of lower and higher time frame, then there is a sure shot buy in this. Okay, that's how we take it. Like okay, it's not like we get a buy trigger at a sell zone and then we immediately take go on a short. We but we know like there is a change in uh, uh, in sense uh, trend. Uh, attempt that has been made out when these two lines have been taken off okay but we have to always decide upon whether it is a support or it is at resistance okay so that is as simple as that with the trend line any times both the the price is taken out by both the trend lines that is a strong confirmation that the trend is getting reversed and then we can possibly say like okay and this so that is the first thing, okay. In sense, using the trend line, we can identify our possible entries, okay. When both the trend lines are taken out considerably, and if also a buy trigger is fired, right, then we also get a volume confirmation with this, okay. So, for example, now here, now let me just go turn one more stuff. That is our buy sell triggers, okay. And keep your conservatives on, and I just turn on my buy sell triggers. Let's see now, when I turn on my buy sell triggers, right? We got one trigger out here for a possible buy and we are at support like morning when the market, you'll see like why it is support and all the six later. But you can see this, this was a crossover that has happened in the morning, the first crossover and that set a buy and it went and tested some resistance, then pulled back down. And you can see this, we got a sell because uh, multiple sub confirmations was there. See, this is one thing where the five minutes was compromised if you turn off your conservatives, you might also get a trigger out here. But as I said, like when both the things are confirmed, right, that's where we look for more confirmed trades. And now this is a more confirmed trade that we got because both the trend lines was taken on this and then we can possibly got a good ride on this. Like, okay. So, <clears throat> so first thing is our buy and sell triggers, right? Uh, sorry, not our buy and sell triggers when coincided with the crossover of both lower and higher time frames. That is the entry we are watching out in the market to enter into the trade. Okay. So next thing is once you enter into the trade, like <clears throat> how long you can sit in the trade. For knowing the targets of the trades, right? We have our pivots with us, like okay. Along in sense that we have the pivots uh, T1, T2, uh, extended targets, CPR, and all those are multiple lines of obstacles on the upside if you are going on a long from the lower side okay so these are the possible targets to watch out and we also have our adr based targets that is tp1 tp2 tp3 and things like that is where you also book out your profits okay but other than that right this trend line will act as a strong support and resistance for us okay so thing is like since we are having why do you need so many kind of uh, options uh, to trade out uh, in sense, we have trend line, we have Pima and, and all these things. The key thing is like even Pima works brilliantly, everything works brilliantly. What I was anticipating or <clears throat> why I'm building out these tools is just to improve my own trading setups and also make uh, things easier for people out there. Okay. In sense, now this is more technically, uh, I can say is more um, well tested and more uh, proven thing than my previous things, what I introduced with Pima and things like that, okay? This gives much more better accuracy when compared to that, okay? That's the reason I'm just uh, trying to optimize it. Maybe going down the line, I might figure out something out, but this, as far as my backtesting goes out, right? This really is, works out like, and I'll show you like uh, how this same logic helps us in uh, even positional and uh, longer term trades out like, okay? So, uh, okay. So uh, to get that, now we know like uh, how do you make an entries using these trend lines, okay? Next thing is how do you ride the trend until your lower time frame is holding on, right? You can ride the trend, okay? Uh, you can see this until the lower time frame is holding on, it's riding the trend. And during, uh, when it hits the morning, our uh, weekly targets, right? We decided 24, uh, 800 levels as possible uh, uh, target on the weekly levels. Once that is hit, right, we can see this every time it came to our lower support, 
uh, time zone, uh, the trend line hold good, bounce back, hold good, bounce back, and then almost settled over there. Like, okay, that is what we anticipated when the market reached around this price, right? Uh, that is where we anticipated market will most probably trend between 24,850 and 24,750 uh, levels. Uh, it's almost in that range, it finally settled down. Okay, so this is how you interpret your trend lines uh, on an intraday basis. Okay, so now uh, let me just turn off our buy sell triggers. Okay, uh, and then I'll just have only the trend lines on. Okay. One thing what I want to do is, uh, see this trend lines implementations, the way we interpret these trend lines and other things, right? This works irrespective of the time frame that we use it like. What I mean to say is like, someone is an intraday player, you want to use with five minutes time frame with daily pivots, this works brilliantly. And if you someone is a micro swing player who want to take weekly positions, okay? Weekly or nifty or weekly bank nifty positions, even there it works the same way. The logic of entry exits and your target booking remains constant across the time frame you trade. Someone is a swing trader who wants to trade with uh, daily candles with monthly pivots. The logic remains the same. Okay, so I'll just uh, show that and uh, showcase how it works out. So now what we have seen out is our intraday trades. That is Nifty with uh, five minutes candlesticks. So lower time frame uh, we have tested, this is one and the higher time frame is this. So now if I go and choose one hour time frame, let me just go here and choose one hour. So with the new build, you also know like the last build itself, this was feature was update. Once you changed your time frame, right? It automatically goes and updates the pivots to respective. So if I change one hour, it will automatically plot me the weekly pivots. Okay, so <clears throat> let me just keep the CPR on so that uh, you guys uh, know like uh, the time frame when you change, right? You also know that uh, we are also upgrading our uh, pivots. Okay, so that will give you a better idea for you. Like, okay, so now I changed one hour. So once I changed my one hour time frame, right? <clears throat> okay, you can see now that it started plotting the weekly pivot. Okay, and weekly pivot is from Friday. Friday. Okay, so this is I'm testing a uh, nifty, right? I just changed that. So now it is a weekly pivot. And this week, right, we can see we had a narrow CPR out there. Okay, let me also go now and then uh, change this trend line to show all the historic trend lines since we also will back test the historic uh, trend lines how it worked out. Okay, so now we know like this week when it started, right, we had a very, very narrow CPR out there. Okay. And if now I'll just go and enable my dashboards too. So in case if you guys have any doubts, you can stop me in between if you have uh, anything to clarify. Otherwise, I'll just walk through once the full trend line thing, what I just uh, wanted to cover up and then we'll take it up, okay? So now we said that Nifty is going to uh, just also enable the uh, labels, okay? Okay, there you go. This is now the weekly this week CPR, very, very narrow CPR and dashboard also showed us we are having a possible breakout this week. Okay, and we can possibly expect extended target. So this is our extended target one. Okay, you can see this extended target. Why we said this because we had narrow CPR. That's why we saw it, said like it's breakout and possible range move we anticipated extended targets. Okay. So that's how we decided upon these targets and things. Then how do you make an entry in this? Like as I said, like anytime if the trend lines is price is trading above both the trend lines, the market is kind of bullish in this. If we have to take a possible breakout at whenever the price is trading above this. Okay. And how do you do that? You can even manually take out when the price is trading above this uh, to go with, with the volume support also we getting considered we'll also go and look into our buy sell triggers because buy sell triggers when you enable right along with our trend line support right trend line confirmation we also get confirmation from volume like okay with this buy sell momentum triggers because so the momentum will come if the price moves and along with it the volume also supports right that's where the momentum comes in the market one day with the price move if there is a price move is there 
we have a we have a price range that you consider as a possible breakout zone but the price has moved but the volume is not supported then it will not move like there we will see a false breakout happening out so most of the time right along with the price if the volume also get support right that's where we consider it's more uh, confident move like, okay so that when you enable this right that's where you see that uh, the volume support along with this price right we got a trigger like okay and uh, once you got this trigger right uh, then you can see this market was trading uh, above this for a possible quite a time and today you can see this once this was compromised right again back to our higher time frame support and that higher frame time support holds good and again bounce back and then we went on to hit our extended targets okay so this is what we have seen in a little bit higher time frame of a micro swing okay and if you also see how it has worked out previously weekly uh you can see this any time right almost like uh from june like i can say like june is the first time we got an entry somewhere june 7th after that it remained above our trend line throughout the session okay and you can see it's beautifully rallying out any pullback below this and coming up right it is again a beautiful buying opportunity for us and where do you make an entry now every time it pulls back right it is getting at a average price that's where the mean of it did and any time that is getting tested right you get a possible reentry opportunities in that trade okay so how this is helpful so if someone is planning for a possible weekly trade in this this is how you plan your trade okay you pick up a stock any stock any instrument for that matter just watch out what's the trend is happening and wait for a possible pullback and then wait for it to come more above the lower and the higher time frames that's where you get a trigger to go long and short in the market and then as per our uh, pivots we know like where which are the possible targets for particular time frame if you are using weekly we have a weekly targets uh, map and then you can sit for those possible targets okay so now these two triggers right uh, is got a sell okay and then if we have taken it what is the pause of it one thing like before i uh, uh, take this question right one thing is what is the stop loss of it like okay for me right the standard rule is whenever you take a trade right the one candle pre previous to that right will be a stop loss if that candle is uh, higher or lower to the trigger candle then possibly the trigger candle will be a stop loss what i meant is something like this say for example this is my trigger candle if i'm going long okay and this is my trigger candle okay this is my sorry let me just clean this up so now this is the trigger candle so for example this is my trigger candle where that trigger is fired okay to buy or sell so this is a long candle so my buy trigger is fired in this just candle below that before that okay preceding candle low will be my stop loss okay and as for my back testing is uh, what i have done right at least 80% of the time this will be respected out if it is not respected we have to take the stop loss okay that means to say see uh, that means to say that we are wrong this time okay and we have to accept that see there is various factors for which the trade can go wrong okay but one thing is if we pick the stop loss right then we'll get a better trade immediately like if we are holding that uh, stop loss right then definitely we are going to make a bigger uh, loss okay because uh, see uh, we have to accept that we can't be right all the time okay so we have to accept that and then move on so stop loss is very simple any time this is uh, fired the previous candle low is your stop loss maybe if there is a pivot order something here uh, very close by maybe you can keep a little bit buffer but you keep a standard rule something like a previous candle low is your stop loss and say for example this is again a buy trigger okay <clears throat> trigger candle the previous candle is something like this okay the low is above this low then keep this as a possible stop loss okay similarly on the upper side this is my sell trigger candle okay and the previous candle is something like this okay this is my trigger candle then this candle high is your stop loss okay and if this is my sell candle and the previous candle high is smaller than the this candle then the trigger candle itself is your stop loss 
So that's the logic behind it. Okay. So in this case, now this is understood how you take the stop loss. See, uh, if you consider now, right, from almost from this, all the things, none of the stop loss is here. Okay. Maybe these two, if you have taken it, see the CPR of this month is not compromised. These two candles compromise the CPR weekly call, sorry, CPR or weekly CPR was not compromised. But even if you've taken this uh, trade out, right? Uh, see, one thing is like when such a big candle comes, right? Your stop loss is very big. You will be taking a trade somewhere at the close of this. The stop loss is big. So either wait for more confirmation. But even if you have taken, right? Take a stop loss at this candle. Okay. If you have taken a trade of this, uh, take a stop loss at this candle. So if you have taken this stop loss, right? You could add, uh, add this right on the upside. Thing, okay. So that's the logic behind it. Okay. So now, <clears throat> yeah, so now I have explained basically how you enter a trade, how do you put your stop loss, how do you trail your stop loss, and uh, possibly uh, on a multiple time frame. So let's just check one more uh, from the in one hour, right? I just now change to daily candles. Okay, so once I change my candlesticks to daily, right, the indicator will automatically plot me the daily lower time and the higher time frame trend lines. Okay, and the pure squad is plotted now, it is a monthly pure. Okay, so when was the last buy trigger we got? Okay, Nifty, this is the buy trigger we got on 7th June. Okay, and after that, there's once it came for retest and then pull back again. We got a retest opportunity to enter long and then still we are holding long. Okay, so and this month possible upper targets. Uh, see, this month monthly is still bullish and this taken out maybe we can say for about targets whatever it is like okay but how do you make an entry this one and there was um, in the month uh, first uh, fourth of june both the lines was compromised we got a sell trigger the very next day right it pulled back above that and gave a buy trigger okay in between these two candles again as i said the candles compromised immediately it was bounced back but even if you have taken this right, we have to take a stop loss and then sit out left. Okay, so no sell triggers in either for last from December. Uh, let's see, like I think so from November there was no selling opportunities that given us with this methods. Uh, any pullback is a buying opportunity in this market. Right? Okay, maybe uh, somewhere OYO where the weekly CPR was compromised. We have origin CPR. If you if you have taken any of these trades right. Uh, even the stop loss, what you have given is small. Okay, it's just one candle before uh, that will be a stop loss. Maybe you can consider possibly a two candle stop loss. That is what you are betting for the move that you are trading on. So, this is more of a trend following kind of a setup. <clears throat> you can pick stocks which is having multiple uh, uh, consecutive uh, ascending or descending CPS and you can ride the trend along with it. Okay, uh, one thing is like when you build positions, right? So, for example, now uh, this trigger on June first, first tick itself, we got. Maybe you can take a. Uh, if you're building a possible swing trade, you can take a bear uh, call spread or something like that. Uh, if there is uh, more than 15 days, you can take the current month uh, expiry as the possible uh, spread. Otherwise, you can play for the next month. If, say, for example, if you're building a trade after 2015th or 20th, uh, generally take the next month uh, calendar uh, end uh, expiry as a possible. Uh, possible swing trade okay that's how you trade so now let's we just go to weekly okay so this is for possible someone who wants to do positional trades uh you can see this is number 20 that is where you got first entry and then no ascending opportunities re-entry opportunities is what we got multiple times and then you can write the trade with this okay so which is a possible stop loss as i said like anytime this is getting compromised you can exit your trade and if this is getting compromised, your trend is reversed. Otherwise, you can play the trade uh, as long as you want. Like, okay. So, um, so let's quickly check out Bank Nifty. And samely, uh, if you go on monthly, right, it will plot the yearly pure. Okay. So let's see, like on the year. So thing is, like the more you study with this, right, you'll be amazed, like how beautifully the pure works and how simple it is. Like, okay. So you can see this. Uh, see this last uh, October twenty. Uh, I think so like August uh, uh, 2020 is where we got a trigger uh, uh, in buy in case of Nifty. Someone is playing for a long positional view, right? Uh, you just uh, take this and then say like whenever this uh, two ascending or uh, three ascending CPR gets formed and you get a trigger and then you can put it and then hold on. Like, okay. So uh, it's still.
we can bring out that. Okay, let's uh, now go on bank duty. Just do a same analysis in case of bank duty whether it works out. So let me just start with five minutes time frame. So I'm not discussing with the mainly on pivots or things today because this session is purely on trend lines. How do you do analyze and how do you do that? And then uh, we'll continue uh, with pivots. Combine this with pivots later on. Okay. So now uh, five minutes time frame pivot uh, bank nifty today. If you see this. Bank Nifty uh, opened uh, almost at the previous day's low. Yeah, well, uh, there's a virgin CPR for Bank Nifty out here. That is where it found the support in the morning. Twice it found the same support. And uh, you can see this morning, uh, the CPR was taken out. We got a trigger out, but we got a uh, resistance out here. This resistance, if you have seen, if, we, if there was a zone out here, that's where it went on. But when such a big candle comes out, right, you don't take a trade like Okay, you just wait for it to retest and then take a trade because we know like such a big candle the stop loss will be huge okay you can't afford that so again we got multiple opportunities here to get long on this and ride this trend okay uh, so we can see multiple uh, times the trend line is taken on the upside and then we got a possible volume support and then a buy trigger on this okay so this is a five minutes let's just quickly move on to one hour so one hour let's see like what's the status uh, um See, one hour, uh, let me just go and change this to Wednesday, okay? So this will give a better bank duty, uh, pure support and all, okay? Very, very narrow. And one more thing I just forgot to tell, like, as in case of uh, PMA zones and other things, right? Whenever the uh, two trend lines, lower time frame and higher time frame trend lines is parallel to each other, okay? That means what I mean is, let me just hide the buy and sell triggers as of now, okay? Uh, let me also add the CPR. See, one more way we can identify the market will trend or it will be in a sideways is the alignment of these two trend lines. So if so, now in this case, if you see right, both the higher and uh, lower time frames or merge it together. Okay, it's almost to touch uh, uh, as a single line. Those are the places the market is kind of consolidating. And it's wait for a, waiting for a breakout. Okay. Once that happens, right, you can see a beautiful ride on this. Again, you can see it is parallel and very small. And it is kind of consolidating. Again, a breakout above that, you can see a rally. See, again, it is almost in a straight line. It is kind of small consolidation. Again, a small breakout. Up. So, again, a small consolidation and breakout on the lower side. Okay. And now it is again kind of consolidating. It says magnitude is now. Again, consolidating out. So, breakout on either side can be anticipated. A breakout on the upside is anticipated in case of bank duty in the coming days. So, this is one more way, right? We can possibly uh, anticipate the, the moves in using the trend lines. Okay. So, this is one hour chart. Let me just uh, again pull back uh, our CPR and then see the higher time frames and then I start taking your questions. Okay. So, let me just go now in buy sell. So one hour uh, this week, it is trading in a very, very smaller range up and down. The CPR is not taken out weekly CPR, just trading inside that. Okay, let me just go to daily candlesticks. So it will plot the monthly pivots. You can see the monthly pivot pretty wide. So we are just trading a possible range kind of a move in case of uh, bank duty. And uh, it is trading uh, bullish because it is trading above the uh, lower time frame and higher time frame zones. And anytime and now you can see it's coming to the trend line, it is just uh, again pulled on the upside. Okay, so it's sharing in a range. Uh, let's go to weekly. So this plots the quarterly pivots. So this quarter has just started. Uh, compared to the last quarter, this is pretty wide. Okay, so this quarter we are anticipating bullish, but kind of a sideways move. Uh, you can see almost all the three weeks it is trading in a very, very small range. Okay, so let's see, like in, in case it pulls back, we can anticipate a weekly CPR, uh, uh, quarterly uh, pure to have some support again, bounce back. And this is also where the lower time frame uh, trend line is also there. Okay, so it will again, good opportunity to enter back in case if it pulls out this. Okay, so this is, uh, and finally, the yearly bank duty uh, looking solid bullish. And it is anticipated to go and test T1 and T2 in the coming uh, months in case of magnitude. It's already given almost our R1. R1 is taken out, so it looks solid. 
uh, for possible T1, T2 targets in the coming days. So banking also looks great. Okay. And even in the yearly CPR, if you see what are the opportunities we had in case of banking, uh, these are the possible opportunities to for us to build uh, uh, say calendar spreads or something when you are working for a little bit higher time frames. Uh, we want to take next month positions and say these are the possible entry opportunities we had in case of bank entry. Okay. Okay, guys, I think so. I'm, I'm done with my questions. Uh, any doubts or anything specific you want to ask on this trend lines? Uh, yeah, you are free to ask now. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you hear me, Ravi? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, go ahead with the question. Uh, I think so. Your mic is again on mute. Maybe you can ask again. Turn on the mic and uh, ask the question again. Okay, meanwhile, uh, Kitty, I'll take your question. Yeah, Kitty, your mic is enabled. Yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh, yes, Ravi, uh, Bank Nifty has given buy signal now. So uh, uh, is that a good time to keep a long option? Long position in Bank Nifty? It's still yeah. as I said, like, you see, now, uh, in terms like uh, when you are investing in playing with majorly index, right? Bank Nifty, you are taking a weekly or monthly positions. That is what we have to watch out for, okay? So if you are planning for a weekly position in case of Bank Nifty, what you have to do is just you go on a weekly time frame, okay? So if you are looking for a weekly, I'll just go to one hour, okay? And then we'll try to analyze, okay? So now, see, as I said, like, now uh, let me just hide historic. So that uh, you'll get a cleaner chart, okay? And let me just put the range for that, okay? And this is our weekly positions. That's perfectly fine. So now, if you see Bank Nifty, uh, sorry, Bank Nifty, you are bullish on Bank Nifty because we know, like, consecutively, Bank Nifty is making higher highs and it is doing good. So this is current week uh, positioning that is getting built, okay? Just plot uh, yeah, one arch scans, right? Okay, so this is our current uh, Tuesday. This is Thursday. Okay, Wednesday was holiday. Okay, so it's not showing properly as of now, like okay, but we know like now it is trading almost at the CPL zones out. So we we are building out right our previous day high is somewhere over here. Previous week high is somewhere over here. And this might be somewhere our own levels. So we have to wait for it for a possible pullback or a breakout of this, right? Maybe you can build positions out. You can build positions even now in case of Bank Nifty. But the thing is, like, once the first trigger that is fired, right? Maybe that is the right time to build out. But now, if you're building it right, you can build. Uh, we can keep a possible bull call spread uh, with a edge uh, position below this, right? Okay. So that uh, in case if it is staying in the sideways move, right, you can take care of that. Right? Yeah, you can still build with a hedge position below this, and then you can hold on. Them, okay. In that case, the possible targets will be these above side targets. Okay. I don't know for some reason, but yesterday being holiday, right? This is having some issues. Let me just plot out the normal uh, uh, without a normal expiry trigger. Okay. Because what happens sometimes, right, with this indicator is uh, if there isn't a holiday in between the week, right, uh, we are having some issues. Right? Okay, let me just now plot Monday to Friday. Uh, okay, so this is our Monday to Friday. So this is Monday. So you can see we are at resistance, like, okay. As I said, like, we are at resistance. A breakout of this is a good opportunity. But if you have still bought a position either at this buy or this buy, right, weekly positions, so thing is we are almost at Thursday, like okay, that is um almost like one day from the expiry like so we are still four days, we can still build positions, keep an edge position, like okay. Buy uh, maybe you can take uh, take 50 to 500 p uh, CE of your buy 
uh, just maybe you can hedge it out with a higher time frame like 5300 or 5500 as a possible see you can sell and edge it as a spread line okay and then you can send possible target will be our t1 that is 52 53 200 and 53 400 will be a possible targets okay so if you see this right the upper resistance for this is somewhere over here like plot the ski zones so if we have one zone out here the next possible upper resistance will be in this upper band okay since, it, since this is also at all time highs right maybe it might not plot out let's see otherwise it will plot only one zone Okay, you can see uh, it's not plotting out because it's already plotted. It is almost at the all time highs like, okay. So, this, yeah. So, somewhere over here, right, you'll get one more uh, TP1 around. Uh, uh, we can expect the possible target. That is 53, 100, 250, 200 levels. Yeah, we can build positions with an edge. Okay. Yeah, you know, you can ask a question. Okay, I have enabled the mic. You can ask a question. Uh, Ravi, am I audible? Yeah, you're audible now. Uh, yeah, I brilliant uh, summary, uh, Ravi. Thank you so much. It was so clear. I have okay. a few queries. Um, okay. When someone like me works only on intraday trading, I normally keep the uh, time zone as three minutes. So I would expect the lower time frame to be three minutes and uh, upper time frame as maybe five or ten minutes. Is that mm -hmm. okay? That's one question. Another one is I'm not looking at uh, volumes as of now. So I want to know whether your indicator takes volume into account so that mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I put the mode as auto and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I wait for the candle to go above the two uh, trend lines to put through a CE trade, say, uh, mm -hmm. automatically I should also see one uh, buy trigger, right, uh, which will strengthen my conviction. Correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, is it okay to put only in AI mode so that I'm not looking into all this bullish reversal, bearish breakout, etc. during the day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are some of the questions I have. So. Okay. Uh, let me just. Uh, maybe I'll just put Nifty, and maybe if you want, we can also take back Nifty. Okay. The, to answer your first question, right? Uh, the way uh, currently the way I have developed uh, the indicator is if you are using five minutes time frame, right? Uh, let me just if you are using five minutes time frame, the lower time frame is five minutes, okay, and uh, the higher time frame it will automatically pick fifteen minutes, okay. And any time frame of your trading lower uh, than five minutes. Say for example, now if I go into three minutes, okay, let me just go now into three minutes, okay. So the indicator what it does is uh, it automatically takes the lower time frame as uh, one minute and then a higher time frame as five minutes. Okay, so that's how it uh, basically does the calculations. And then, so now this is a three minutes time frame of uh, 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 Nifty shown out. Okay, but the calculations internally, right? It pulls out the best time frame what I have back tested. So it takes one and three minutes and then starts plotting out the triggers. Okay, uh, so this is, is that my. Okay? Is that yeah. okay? Or you suggest uh, five minutes? No, it's still fine. Like you can use even three minutes time frame, even in the three three minutes time frame. If we now see, right, we got a buy trigger out here. Okay, so now and also one more thing, what I've done is like when you're going lower than five minutes, right, it will plot the intermediate CPR and intermediate targets for you because when your uh, time frame is lower than five three minutes, right, uh, we need to know like for this particular session, right, which is the possible uh, support and which is the possible targets because we will not uh, stay in the trade for long. So for that reason, right, if it is in auto mode, see, if it is in auto mode, so it will automatically plot the intermediate CPRs for you, okay? But if you want to see the regular uh, full day CPR, right, you have to just go here and then change to this intra, uh, scalp, uh, intraday, okay? Uh, and that's it. Okay. Once you do that, right, instead of plotting the intraday CPRs, right, uh, the indicator will automatically go and uh, plot the all uh, in uh, intraday CPR. So now this is our intraday CPR levels. Okay. So you yeah. suggest keeping the mode at intraday, is it instead of auto? Uh, no, uh, 
no, for auto, uh, you can use the scalping. So, see, as I said, like, if you are using scalping, right, uh, it will plot the intraday CPRs. But if you're not watching out for your CPR, for your possible targets and the things, right, uh -huh. right, then you can just retain the in auto mode itself and play for this. Level, okay. So, as far as what I have back tested, right, if you are good at scalping, which you can exit and enter faster, right, this works brilliantly. You don't need to look out any uh, pivot points and other things. Each time when you get 10 or 20 points in case of looking, then book and trial. Okay. So let me just uh, now uh, show all the triggers fired out today. Okay. So one thing is like if the market is trading in the first five minutes range, right, you will avoid the trade. Like, okay. Otherwise, right, see, if we got a trigger here. This is your stop loss, almost one is to three. We got it. Here, okay. Always consider the first trigger for your thing. Multiple entries rather avoid. You always enter the first change of trend. That is the best uh, risk reward you get. You've got to sell, here, sell out here. The previous candidate will be a stop loss. And then you can see it's given more than one is to four, one is to five. Okay. And you can see this is a three minute chart. Again, we got a trigger, bigger candle. If you are okay with this stop loss, uh, you can get it and then you can play this. Okay. If you have taken this sell, based on this trigger, you have to take the stop loss. That's it. And also keep in mind of our uh, time frames that we choose generally after three avoid. And in between, you know, like uh, after 11 or 11, 30, the market is in the, already gave the move in the morning move, then avoid that intermediate. Because uh, avoid in sense, you have to be extra careful in your trades. Right? But if you stick on with the stop loss, right, this rewards well. Right? Okay. Even I have backtested the same with one minute time frame. Okay. So let me just pull out now one minute time frame. So the thing is like, uh, it depends basically on the person who is uh, very good in one minute, right? In sense, who is more disciplined in your trades, right? Then they can you know, play out like multiple trades in and out, in and out. It rewards one thing if you are stick with your stop loss. Okay. So this is one minute time frame. So the indicator automatically now plots the lower time frame one and higher time frame as five minutes. Okay, this is what I personally do in, uh, if I have to do a scalp. And you can see this. This is the first trigger we got uh, a little bit out here. This is a stop loss. Okay, and then we got a almost one is to two, and this gave good reward. And then again a short here. This rewarded. This is a small stop loss trigger. This is a stop loss. But whenever it rewards out, right, you get a good entry and then decent profits out there. Okay. So always, rule is always have a one uh, candle stop loss. The trigger candle previous will be your stop loss. Uh, no need to look out any possible other uh, buy or sell triggers. And to answer other question, whether AI mode works, yeah, definitely AI mode works. But let me just uh, pull this out and say uh, AI. So uh, in this, right, it will avoid all the other stuff, okay? And uh, since the stock is making all-time highs, right, you might not get upper resistance bands getting formed. Uh, but otherwise, right, this also works out. Uh, I just remove the scammer and other things stuff. Okay. So uh, again, with this AMO, right, all you have to keep is just uh, the trend lines and then just play out, okay? So one thing, uh, extra thing that we also need to take care in case if you are doing a scalp is, uh, we also need to parallelly watch out our option chart. Okay. So that is one thing very much like you parallelly open option chart, uh, C and P chart uh, side by side. Okay. And just have our trend lines alone plotted out. Okay. So if you are looking for a possible buying opportunity, right? You, in the option chart also, you should see a, uh, buy trigger fired out at one minute. Okay. At the same time, right, you should see that in your P chart, uh, you should also should have got a sell trigger. Okay. Why this is important is we know, like, uh, see, most of the time we know, like, the trigger is fired, but the options doesn't move, like, right? Now, Ravi. Um, sorry. Sorry. I'm losing out on this. What is this option chart and price chart? I didn't get it. Okay. So, what I. Uh, More questions, Ravi. You may want to answer that also. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm not looking into volume information because you mentioned that sometimes price movement may be there, but not supported by volume. Does your indicator take that into account or uh, do we have to monitor it manually? No, the indicator uh, takes that, uh, that into account now. 
because uh, we can see this this was a good uh, volume breakout that has happened out here and if you see right uh, previous to that itself right in this itself right see this is one more th volume that i built long time back but that is not used much now that is already taken care in our current thing so these two candles right is where the previously there was volume build up happening so that is taken care now right so whenever there is a breakout of volume with price right the indicators gives the buy trigger so any buy triggers that you see here right are all volume supported triggers is it so, conservative mode on or uh, even the regular one no uh, it should be conservative on like when you remove this conservative off right in sense when you don't uh, when you turn this off it will give multiple triggers for you like okay and now if i turn it off it will give multiple triggers what happens in this kinds of mode is it will show all the triggers even with volumes without volumes everything gets shown out there okay and also it doesn't uh, consider much of the trend lines uh, along with it so always keep this off see this i kept it uh, still retaining out because see someone might know that a particular price level is very strong and they want to take a trade exactly when it touches over that like okay so in those cases you, you want to take an aggressive entry like okay in those uh, cases right you can turn off that and use otherwise always keep the by default conservative is on always keep that assets so that will always take into consideration the volume as well as the price into account okay and that's a very good learning point because i normally don't keep the conservative trade on okay and, um, sometimes i get into loss because of that and then i have to wait and it may go either way so uh, you suggest that uh, we keep it in auto mode 3 minutes also is okay and uh, keep the conservative trade on uh, yeah. so that the buy sell triggers do take into account both price as well as uh, volume is that uh, that's my understanding now am i correct Yeah, you're correct. Like, well, uh, well, as I said, like, uh, whenever you buy, sell, uh, so for example, now this buy is triggered. One thing we also, when you are in A mode, right? Like when you, this buy trigger is fired, uh, you can always trade. Right? Sometimes you get a buy and sell suddenly or at one shot. Like, say for example, in this case, right, you get a buy and a sell. Right? One thing is like we have to keep a trade stop loss on this sell triggered out here and then take a reverse to trade. Like, okay. Yeah, those are spikes. Yeah, uh, difficult to avoid. Yeah, like, difficult to avoid. One thing is like yeah. when you have your analysis mode, right? Uh, we can uh, when you have a doubt when there is a multiple triggers fired both the sides, right? In sense of buy and sell, always go in analysis mode or I have one chart open in analysis mode to just to check whether we are at a right support or uh, resistance as per our pivots. Like so, now we know now this is. Old thing, right? Now we know, like it is trading above this trend line, and uh, we know, like it is. This is twenty two eight twenty four eight hundred dollars. This is a strong resistance, but we know, like now, since it is holding on, right? Uh, there is a good chance if this breaks out. So that way, right? We can always take a uh, because A mode we don't know exactly the uh, supported resistance, but you can always club the analysis mode with A and then make it issue. The uh, game mode for scalping uh, brilliantly works out. Like we can always use this and then sit for this uh, target. Uh, okay. Anyway, in this trade, right, we are looking for a quick scalp and exit out. Like so, even if you are taking a reversal trade, right? Uh, maybe if you are really quick enough, right? And you know, like there is a strong resistance, you can play for this as a possible target. In this small mm -hmm. okay. Because we know, like, if this is a lower time frame is taken compromise, right? There is good chance that this might uh, as a, act as a support. Right? And if it is trading inside this, right, there is it's possibly waiting for a breakout so somewhere, something oh, like this. Uh, yeah. If the candles are within the uh, both the time frames, uh, yeah. better to avoid, is it? And yeah, better to avoid. Like, uh, and if the lines are parallel, or if the lines are merging, again avoid. uh maybe because consolidation is happening yeah, exactly. yeah. and this holds good in any time frame that we are looking be it 3 yeah. minutes or 1 hour or whatever yeah, yeah. what about time frame it is so generally whenever it is consolidating right uh you just mark the high of whichever side it is consolidating okay and mark the low of it wherever it is consolidating and then wait for a possible breakout with a trigger like okay so for example now this is consolidating in the small box for whole time any time this box is taken out with a trigger right that will give you money so that's how we can trade out sorry could you please 
come on that again uh, how did you draw that line uh, no now you can see this uh, just visually if you see right uh, ah. you can see this is trading in the small box like right ah okay okay so okay. it is consolidating in the small ah. box like okay ah. so what i have done is uh, this small box what i drawn right i just marked the high and low of that box okay this is the high of that box and this is the low of that box okay okay and you can see this it is also parallel and it is kind of consolidating out here so any time this box is broken out with a buy trigger okay that is a trigger that we got a volume also confirmed for us mm. and the price also has given a breakout so there is a volume as well as price breakout at this candle that's where we can go long otherwise even if you can you can go long at this but the thing is like it is kind of again consolidating but as i said like if you are taking a swing position or something like that then maybe we can build a spread and sit like okay so even if it consolidating and then break out we can ride the trend okay otherwise if you wait for a breakout and then take a trade and then sit for this yeah. okay got it so uh, could you explain the price chart and the option chart also you were mentioning yeah, yeah. Uh, so what i meant was for example let's take this example this is gold to five minutes time frame we'll just try to explain in five minutes uh, just a minute okay sorry uh, uh let me just hide the previous triggers okay let me just check like what possible trade opportunities uh, we could have anticipated today so uh, let me just go in analysis mode i just keep this as auto okay uh, this is a uh, key so i just go to thursday okay and uh, i want this in analysis mode So uh, now, uh, let's see, let it work. Okay, meanwhile, what I generally we want is, we want to observe both options, that is the call options and the put options, what's happening. So I'll just open a two window for that, okay? So the logic behind why we do this exercise is like, uh, we want to know like, whether the buyers uh, in sense the call options are uh, leading or the sell options are leading we know like if the market is falling right the calls will be at a cheaper price to buy okay and the fees will be a uh, put will be costlier to buy like, okay so whenever as we see in the price chart right whenever the movement is coming right we can see a volume spike happening out of that and also with volume it also breaks out so what we have to do is so now now if you see, let me just open the market opening, open around this. This is the opening price for today in OVT, right? That is 25, 547 is very to open. Okay. So generally what I do is, when now the market is opening at 24, uh, 5, 5, uh, 540 something, 100 points down is 24, 5, uh, 400 something like that. Okay. 24, 450 or something. So let me just keep 24, 400. One in the money, a uh, little bit in the money setup. Okay, so the left side, what I'll plot this, uh, let me just plot. Okay. Let me just plot Nifty 25 Okay, and in case we know live, now this is the way the market opened. So one step in the money, I'm just going. So. 25500 will be very short even you can keep 25500 almost at the money otherwise you can keep a little bit lower 24 450 or 24 400 okay on the upside again if the market is going to fall right immediate in the money on the pe side will be 24 600 or 24 650 okay let me just keep 24 600 Okay, so now what I have, I have on both the sides of the chat is left side is my call and right side is my put. Okay, so let me just plot the indicator on this. You should plot the indicator again on this. In on this. Okay, and let me just go into one minute time frame for this. 
So uh, you can hide all the dashboards and the things. Okay. I'll just keep the area. Okay. That's it. Uh, just keep the trend line and the this one hot. Okay. So uh, nothing I have done. I just kept the indicator on with with monthly my CPR and trend lines. On. Okay. So let me just go in the morning opening nine o'clock. Okay, this is uh, the where it market it open. Uh, even CPR and I think it is so you can keep it in Friday so that uh, not multiple CPRs. Okay. Okay. Now let me just uh, plot the buy and sell trigger. It's plotted. So now you, this is a one minute chat. Okay. So is this setup, what I've explained is fine, right? Any doubts on this? You mean by price chart, uh, the C or the P uh, chart, is it? Yeah, C or the P chart. Is I'm just asking a very basic question because I'm yet to understand, uh, you know, how to use it and all. Yeah. So, uh, whenever you want to enter into a position, right? Uh -huh. At that time, say for example, morning opening, you are sitting in the morning, and then after this two, three candles, you want to take a position. Okay? Yeah. Or at the opening itself, you want to take, at 9 8 itself, you know, like the market is opening at 24 542, right? Uh -huh. So, at the morning, when the pre market, I know, like the market is opening at 24 542. I have two things to watch out like one is there is a, you have a virgin cpr out here okay so as per the market study right now the market was aligned bullish and we are having a gap down opening okay yeah in case of a gap down opening the possible chances from the virgin cpr it might take a bounce and then reverse back okay otherwise if the virgin cpr is compromised it might go down further mm -hmm. so we have two options in there. so uh, in case if I'm going long or if I find a support, I'm going long. If the market is opening here, immediate lower ITM uh, strike is 24, 400 or 24, 450. That is 100 points uh, almost uh, lower. That is the immediate in the in the money option. Mm -hmm. So that is what I, I op open the C chart of it, like announce it. But okay. if you think that it will go down, you have to open the PE chart, right? Yeah. So that's what, like, on the right hand side of it, right? I am open the PE chart. Ah. Oh, you so have the right chart and the C chart. Yeah, I open C as well as P and keep it ready both. Ah. Okay. 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 That's how I keep it. And you get the buy sell triggers on these charts also, price charts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the beauty of it. Now with the indicator plotted, right? I'll get both buy and sell triggers on this. And if you are an option buyer, right? Currently, mm -hmm. I have not given option to hide the sell triggers, but always look out for only buy triggers in your option chart. Got it, right? Uh, that sell is for uh, maybe closing the position? Yeah, yeah, yeah no. you can consider as a possible closing the position, or you, if you are an option seller, right? You can use the option uh, sell as a possible trigger. So what you are saying is that in the price chart, if you get a buy signal, that's a stronger confirmation uh, to go long. Um, I mean, to to buy whether it's a P chart or a C chart. Is yeah, in sense price? now in the spot chart, right? We got a buy trigger around uh, nine forty or something, right? Uh -huh. In the five minute chart, we got a trigger. But if you are uh, using a one minute chart, you would have got a little bit earlier. Okay, so. Uh, Whatever it is like, okay, around 940, we got a trigger in a five minutes. You just see in your call chart, right? Call uh, call uh, option chart, the trigger that was fired, we got a trigger around 933 or something like that. Okay. okay. On a one minute chart. Okay. And we can see this even on option chart, right? 
the 15 minutes or the higher time frame and the lower time it is trading above this. So even in the option chart, we know like the bulls are strong. Okay. So if the call price has to go up, right, the put side, right, the P price should go down for us, right? So if I keep the cursor on my call chart at this trigger, which was fired at 934, if you see on the right hand side of the chart, right, uh, the cell uh, is also triggered out. Like you can see this, this is where I kept my trigger for a possible buy trigger. And the same price here, right, same time that is 934, this is the candle which is also trading below the trend that is. So from morning, right, the P is active like. Oh, okay. And but uh, when you got a buy here, right, that is uh, saying that the P's are weak, the C is uh, doing good like. So we can possibly, the market can bounce on the upside. Mm -hmm. Some uh, these two videos uh, viewing, is it in the free version also? The, or uh, it's only the paid version? I think so. This uh, but split window, you will get it only in the uh, paid version of it. Like, uh -huh. okay. Okay. Uh, only thing is, like, uh, otherwise we have to open two windows parallelly, uh -huh. and then uh, we can. Anyway, even in the free window, uh, free version, only two windows are allowed. Uh, in the paid version, free one, free version, isn't it? Uh, free version. Yeah, yeah. I think so. They, we have a limitation uh -huh. over that. Okay. Okay. But uh, what uh, I uh, oh, the recent backtesting what I done right, right? This avoids you whenever uh, there is a see thing is like we can see the can this call right uh, never gave an exit for us till this point right. So where do you exit your call? See as we uh, see uh, say now this is where it made a high at ten forty the call made a high. Okay. In the spot chart, if you see at ten forty. Somewhere over here, some 1040. See, it's almost tested at 950, our uh, upper resistance band. Okay. And uh, from 1040 somewhere, it started reversing back. In, okay. So, but in the call chart, you can see this made a high around this and then started slowly pulling down. So, you know, like there is a resistance out here and you can keep on trialing if it is going up. Like, okay. So, you call here. Yeah, and the safe exit is whenever this trend line, the time uh, our uh, trend line is getting broken, right? That is the time to exit the trade. And if both the trend lines are taken out, right? Uh, then definitely you don't get into a long way unless it is again taken out. See, you can see again you've got a buy trigger out here. Okay. Uh, if even see one more thing is right, you are keeping a stop loss one candle below it. Like, okay. Even mm -hmm. if you take right multiple trades, uh, if you are uh, disciplined enough to take the stop loss, definitely it works out. Uh, may I ask a question, Ravi? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, suppose I've taken a CE position. Yeah. Uh, I'm seeing it a little consolidating or uh, I'm looking at uh, whether I should exit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is in the option chart. But in the mm -hmm. price chart, um, I can wait for a, I can look at the C chart and wait for a sell signal or a P chart and then wait for a buy signal. Which one will come faster? Or which one I should do? Um, uh, I hope I can yeah, clear. I ah. So, my suggestion is you wait for uh, basically if you're taking a long year and the price is consolidating like this. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah this is, the left side is my C, and you are, I've taken a buy out here, like in the morning itself. Like this can ah. if you're taking a buy up and down, up and down, it's doing good. Okay. Ah. The key thing is like, that's why we keep a parallelly weighted uh, uh, P chart also on the right hand side. Okay. The idea behind keeping an equidistant uh, uh, option chart on both the sides is because their delta is almost same. Okay. So if I'm taking 100 points down the uh, uh, my C chart and 100 points up the C in the money of uh, P chart, right? The movements almost remains the same. Whenever there, are, there is a momentum coming, right? It will get reflected. So, for example, when this is consolidating, you can see this. There is no buying also coming in, in my PE chart. So I can wait, like okay. So you can parallelly can cross check both things. If there is a buying coming in my PE chart, if you are taking a call on the the PE side, right, you are getting a buying trigger getting formed, right. 
that is where you have to be more cautious and uh, uh, play with your stocks right got it right no ravi uh, uh, normally when it is falling let's say uh, yeah. no, uh, generally uh, and so on okay so uh, that's why if my direction is wrong my losses are always more um than the gain the rate at which i lose is always yeah. more than the rate at which i gain if the direction is correct also yeah so that is what uh, prompted me to ask this question if i am holding a ce position on the price chart should i hold a pe chart or a ce chart uh, to decide on the exiting you know uh, first thing like if you have taken a call okay huh. you have taken a call on ce say for example this trigger you have taken huh. this trigger you have taken you have taken a call at this on the close of this okay on yeah. the close of this you have taken a call and yeah. when you when I mean, i keep a mouse on this right on the right hand side also you can see the mouse is also coinciding same at the same time on the p chart right you can see this yeah. huh? and yeah. in this in the cell okay the call is on the buy and p side it is on the sell okay yeah when i keep the cursor out here i'll just mark the horizontal line so uh, you can see that So this is the line I took a trade on my um, C chart. Okay, and the same candle is here on my P chart. Okay, so you can see this: the price is trading buy, and here it is showing on the sell side, like a strong sell and strong buy. Okay, and when on the in the call side, you can see this price is consolidating in a small range. Up and down, it is doing here, right? Yeah, yeah. In this time, I want to know whether I have to exit my C or how do I decide whether when to close my C position. Okay, one way is you just wait for your C position to close either of the one of the other trend lines. Okay, that is the okay. first rule. In any okay. time, if the call position is breaking your trend line, lower time frame or higher time frame trend line, that is the first. Sign that the calls are getting weaker, like call positions are getting weaker. Okay. One more uh, parallelly, we can also check out like how the P's are doing because if the call has to fall, right, the P has to rise. Okay. And yes. all this time till almost uh, this is like what till almost eleven fifteen, eleven twenty, we will see that the call has not given any sell trigger for us. Like. Okay. But Till eleven eleven thirty, we didn't also get any buy trigger also in P. Okay. In case if the call is trading somewhere over here, and we are in the buy side, we are getting a buy trigger in the P side. That means to say, the bulls, uh, the P's are getting stronger, like and the bears are getting in, like. So that is one more way we can also check, like. See, mm -hmm. see, most of the time, right? Any time the trend line is getting compromised, right? Uh, that is the first sign to uh, uh, you are in the wrong side of the chart. That is simpler, Ravi, <laughs> for yeah. me because I cannot. I, I'm using the free version, so I can't see both. And okay. here we are talking about two price charts. Usually, I am only on the option chart, so I thought I'll keep one option chart and one price chart. But here we are keeping two price charts: one CE and one PE. Okay. Isn't no. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is for more uh, confirmation on uh, which side the options can move uh -huh. faster and things like that. Okay? okay, but simple is any time if it is breaking your trend lines, right? That's the first sign that it is getting the uh, weaker, like, and you can exit your positions. Yeah. Okay. That's really. Only thing is like uh, we always should make sure that uh, trigger candle, previous candle is the stop loss. Like, so even if you take multiple trades, right, your stop losses will be always small. Mm -hmm. So that's the logic behind it. Okay, got it. Thanks. Okay, uh, Jatin, I can see your uh, hand raised. You can uh, ask a question. Jitesh, sorry, Jitesh Pade. Yeah, Jitesh, you can speak. Jitesh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, am I audible? Can, yeah, you're audible. Like, a little bit noisy. Am I audible? Yeah, you're audible. Like, you can speak. Okay. Okay. 
so uh, ravi i just wanted to uh, uh, confirm that i am an option buyer okay so what kind of settings should i set on my indicator to get the possible triggers like you because i am not getting these two trend lines on my chart okay uh, first thing uh, to answer your first question right uh, how do you, why you are not getting just delete all the indicators on your chart okay just go to indicators okay, okay. and then go to invite one day scripts and set, select the indicator okay and then say okay so okay you might be using a older version of the indicator once you do this exercise right it will add the latest version of the indicator okay and the latest version if you see uh, it uh, once it's added right uh, it should see pro 4.6 okay so that is the latest version once you do that right it will automatically plot the default all the things okay so thing is by default right it will plot all the lines and everything maybe then you have to decide like what all to enable and what all to disable okay so now if you are adding uh, uh, parallelly you should able to see this okay i am adding parallelly with you okay so can you see the same thing as what are you i am showing now uh yes okay so now see all the, you know like which are the pod, you know you see the must thing that you have on the chat is your sessions okay so the by default right we can keep your dashboard compact uh, remove this compact if you are using desktop on the mobile you can keep this on because uh, it takes too much of your uh, real estate space out there on chat otherwise you, you can keep this off and session is must you should have cpr is a must you should have okay other than that right maybe auto blocks you, you can get rid of as of now uh, trend line you can keep it on okay and then uh, buy sell you can keep it on and then you can also uh, no you you are going you are going too fast ravi sorry uh, okay so just you remove your lines okay and then session range you can keep it on cpr you keep keep it on okay rest other things you can turn it off except trend lines and buy sell okay just play around like in sense once you have this right key thing is like we need to understand uh, which are the major important zones to watch out for okay uh, because we have in the, the indicator all the things but uh, once we have this major thing right you should first know like what is the range for that particular day for that we have this yellow band uh, upper and lower okay that is the major two bands any time is price is breaking above this upper uh, resistance band on the lower support band right you will have to know like how far it will go on either side like. for that we have this uh, t1 t2 external targets okay yeah this is on analysis mode right uh, this is in analysis mode okay so same thing right uh, you can also also do in ai mode okay and a mode only thing is like this key zones what you put right so this you can keep it to two or three uh, depends on how much uh, zones you want to plot uh, and then say okay so in this right it will just plot out only the support and resistance bands like okay so, along with your uh, adr based targets that is tp1 means tp1 means take profit one take profit two like that it is so again the triggers will be automatically shown out for you in your a mode so we now know in case of uh, uh, nifty right today this was a good support band and this was a good resistance band so morning uh, within first half of of an hour 45 minutes this was tested multiple times once this breakout happened right we got the opportunity to again play for this like okay so this is uh, the way we do it like okay see the easy uh, instance to get more familiarized with it right just uh, try to play around with this with uh, multiple stocks and uh, do a practice okay so for example now uh, just pull out some nifty 50 stocks or something and then try to pull out for each one of those and see like how it is behaving so that is uh, the best way you can uh, in sense uh, get familiarized with it. because in the live market when you do this exercise right uh, you will find it tough like in sense uh, you get confused like. but after market when you run for 50 stocks every day right uh, you will get a very good feel of it like now let's uh, 
see this for a couple of stocks. See, now uh, this is what Adani. Adani, if you see today, right, uh, alignment wise, it is bullishly aligned, but it opened below the CPR. So it is kind of bearish on the opening, right? Right. Yeah. And you can see this previously, this is where the, it came and then this is where the trend reversal happened. Right. So that's why the CPR, you can see it is uh, marked in uh, green, light green. So that's a trend reversal sign. Okay. So okay. you know that the last bulls have come from this price and taken the market on the upside. Right. right. So if the market is falling in the morning from there, right, the prices, people who are sitting out in this right zone will try to defend it out. So this talk, if you have analyzed the pre-market, right, this is a valid trigger for you to go short uh, uh, because we know like this is where the buyers are sitting. Okay. And uh, you can see this, uh, this sell trigger is fired and this sell trigger is fired. And then you can see this. And again, a buy out here and it almost went and tested the mid of this today's session range. So that's how you trade okay. 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 And for... Yeah. Uh, for so uh, as a bank nifty i trade usually bank nifty uh, so for okay. option buying should i use the expiry as wednesday or should i keep it as an auto see the, even with the normal uh, thing also it works perfectly fine and since a uh, little bit uh, extra uh, edge you will get when you use the expiry day as uh, wednesday like even otherwise right say i'm just putting the normal uh, intraday uh, weekly that is monday to friday even that right it really works out nothing to worry out sometimes what happens right expiry to expiry since we are trading on since you are playing intraday it will not make much difference but if you are doing a positional play right uh, then uh, i will suggest you go with this uh, uh, option expiry day thing like right? otherwise it's perfectly fine right? you can use the normal okay. uh, default setting also like it works fine okay okay, okay. thank uh, you but thank you Ravi. Yeah, when you're carrying positions or something, you always uh, check this with uh, Wednesday and see. Otherwise, uh, even intraday, see, even this, if from Monday, you can see this is the CPR, this is the weekly high, almost went tested again, now holding on. So at the CPR today also, it found a support pullback. So even with the default settings also, right, with Monday as a uh, starting of the week, yeah, that works out. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Please. So, any other questions? Arish, can you explain more about AI? Uh, <clears throat> AI, as I said, Arish, um, I think so, whether uh, you are there, Arish, Arish is, yeah, Arish. See, AI, uh, as I said, like, right, I've just used more of this pure based price action, and rather than plotting all this uh, T1, T2, I just plotted, uh, try to uh, put the bands out there, right? Okay, that's the major. So even in case of bank nifty, if you see, right, let me just uh, make the AI a uh, little bit brighter. Now, if you see the key zones, right, let me just let, make this a little bit brighter. So we have just plotted one key zone. That is the one support and resistance zone in this. Okay, so let me just go uh, in AI mode. Okay, consider this now, uh, all it has plotted for us when the week started was, this is my upper resistance band and this is my lower support band. Okay, so anytime the price is breaking this on the upside, right, we can see bullishness coming in the market. And anytime this is getting uh, around this, if it price is coming and then you can get a buy trigger, uh, this is where the bulls are sitting in the market. So it almost uh, literally traded inside this. See, how I build this out is based on the price action that's happened out here, right? We try to figure out a level where which the sellers are more strongly dominated. Like. That's the AI mode of it. Like. Okay, and uh, if you want to have multiple uh, zones, right? We just go in a little bit uh, higher time frames and then try to check out the multiple zones. Also, okay, for your upper resistance and lower uh, supports. Okay, so if you increase the AI 
band's uh, uh, frequency, right? It will also plot out your multiple zones. So you can see this. If now this is compromised, right? You can see band nifty as very weak, and it is good chance that it even even come to this lower supports because in between, right? There's not much big supports out there, right? Okay, because the last buyers who entered here, right? Uh, after that, there was a good rally out there. So in case if this selling is happening out, if this low is compromised, right, there's a good chance that back duty might come and test this out. Okay, that's the thing right? in front of it. Right? If this is taken out, right, the back duty again go to this again new highs, the uh, 53, 300 levels on the upside can be tested out. So now it is kind of bullish. You can see this is kind of taken out. The high of this taken out, right, again fresh buying can be at this point. Fine, guys. Uh, any other questions? Otherwise, uh, we'll end the session. Okay, I think so. We are done with it. Okay, so thanks for joining the session. Any doubts and other things, uh, post it in the Telegram and we'll try to have uh, more uh, <clears throat> discussions of this sort in the coming days in the group. Uh, the more questions you have, Yes, the more I learn now, so I can share my knowledge with you guys. Okay, so you guys take care. Bye. <clears throat>